Hello chums, and welcome to another tournament report, how exciting! And this one is for Clash of Kings 2021, which is uh, the world's biggest, uh, certainly the UK's biggest um, tournament. It's uh, the end of year tournament, uh, featuring people from all over the UK and the world. And this uh, year was obviously postponed from last year because reasons, and uh, it is, was in uh, Firestorm Games in Cardiff which I've not been to before. In fact, no one has been to before because it was a brand new venue. And so it was uh, just uh, from when I'm recording last week, last weekend, on the 9th and 10th of October 2021. It was a six-game tournament over two days, three, day, three games on the uh, Saturday, three games on the Sunday at 2,300 points. Uh, uh, and so that was the tournament. Let's have a look at the rules. So this was the tournament points. It's not particularly relevant because I can't remember particularly what I scored in any of the times, but I might tell you as we go through. Um, but just so you know, um, it bears relevance because uh, the only modifier to your score, so you get 15 for a, a victory, draw is 10, loss is 5. The only amendment to your score is uh, based on how much you kill. So the amount you win the scenario by irrelevant, it's just how much you kill. So uh, that uh, might bear relevance if any of your army is left. So this was my list that I took. If you watched my Forfeit Snake report, this might seem familiar because it's basically the same with some stuff added on because this is at 2300, 2300 rather than 2000. So uh, it's a doubles list of Twilight Kin. And by doubles, I mean I've got two of nearly everything I can. So double Impalers, double Gargoyles, double Butcher Regiments. Uh, double Chrome Bound Abyssal Horseman, uh, with, uh, one with Caterpillar Potion for Pathfinder and one with Brew of Sharpness to hit on twos. Um, I've got two Summoner Crones uh, and I've adjusted them a little bit to, to fit the points in for other stuff. So one's on a horse uh, just as she comes and one's uh, got boots. Are you, what, she was flying previously, now she's just got boots of levitation and uh, Bane Chant 2. Uh, on top of that I, had, I, I put in a, a regiment of uh, Kindred Archers which was basically an unlock for the Cronebound Shadow Hulk that I put in. I did try them with Tall Spears, but Tall Spears are garbage and not worth taking. Uh, and a Shadow Hulk is a nice big block of dash 20, defense 5 in the middle. Uh, works quite well on my list. And the only other two things I've got, I've got an Archfiend and a Soul Bane. Both of them as naked as the day they came into this world or into this list. And that takes me to 2,300 points. A unit strength of 22 and 14 units, which is not bad for an elite army. So let's plough into this gargantuan report with the first game. Game one, and I was, uh, I'm going to say, scared when I saw my first opponent because it says, as you see there, game one versus Matt, who had Kingdoms of Men. Matt there is Matt James, who is the chair of the Kings of War Rules Committee. And I wasn't scared particularly because he's scary. He's not. He's very nice. Uh, but he's scared because he's a very good player and... Frankly, coming into the first tournament we've played in, I don't know, quite a long time. I guess not, because I did four for snakes, so I really don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, it's massive, and I got Matt James on the very first game. He's scary, and especially when you look at his list, which is, is this. So he starts off with two regiments of shield wall, and then five regiments of knights. It's a knight themed list. Yes. So he has five regiments, and they have one as Brewer Strength, one as Pathfinder, one as Healing Brew, which he did actually use, by the way, because I reminded him to, and then two are naked. He's got two troops of scouts to be nice chaff for them, and then he's got all the flyers you can imagine. He's got, uh, well, he's got a mounted general on a horse with a crystal pendant, which I think is a nice unit. Expensive, but nice. He's got a general on a winged beast, which is like a mini dragon with Brew of Haste. He's got an ASB on a horse with a loot. We've got two heroes on Pegasus, and then he's got two wizards. Both of whom have got Lightning Bolt instead of Fireball. Both of whom have got Bane Chant. And one of whom has the Inspiring Talisman. Yes, so, um, knights. Lots of speed, lots of flyers. Hard to deal with. Let's see how I manage. There he is. Ah, oh, that's Firestorm Games, by the way, if you want to know what it looks like and you haven't had the chance. So we're right at the front of the store there, right in the corner. And you can see pretty much the whole centre. So there's another bunch of tables upstairs, and you can see the tables ahead. So there's 40-odd uh, uh, tables, 43 tables, I believe. On the left there behind him is is, is um, Chris Walsh, by the way, the world's most beautiful army. 
You can almost see it in this box here. Uh, anyway. uh, oh, look, it's Paul Welsh. Anyway, moving on. Didn't ask them if I could use their photos, did I? So this is how we deploy. So we're playing Pillage. I should point that out. We're playing Pillage with six tokens. You can see the tokens. They are quite clear. So we've got one behind a house here, one on the other side of the board, and then just four across the centre. So much... Ooh, whoa! That's gone crazy. So much so boring. All right, so... I'll tell you about my plan in a minute, but uh, you can see how we deploy. So we deploy quite occasionally. Uh, Matt deployed his um, foot guard here, or shield wall, back here. And then he kind of went in with, I can't remember, probably the, the, the knights or the heroes behind the house next. So you've got your, uh, the green knight hero here is the uh, crystal pendant guy, I think. And there's your ASB with the loot. I think that's one of the wizards. You've got the, I think this is the dragon, mini dragon guy. There's the mounted wizard. Uh, there is one of the Pegasus Knights, there's the other Pegasus Knights. Um, you've got your Mounted Scouts here and here, and all of this is just Knights. Right? So pretty simple. For my part, I deploy pretty much the same in every single game, apart from this one. So I wanted to make Matt put as much as possible on this side of the board, because I was going to ignore these two tokens, and I was going to try and dominate these four tokens, right? So you see I put my gargoyles sideways here to hide from Lightning Bolt. I want them to just take this token at the end of the game. Then I want to win the fight for these two, and then hopefully win the fight for this one in the middle to, to win for two. That's my plan, right? So to do that, I started by deploying, as I always do, this centre block here. So this is my melee block. Um, I've got Butchers here, Butchers here. The Shadow Hulk goes in the middle. Then we've got the Soul Bane is here. He's got a little banner, so you know it's him. Uh, he's the only one that inspires elves, or well, the demon does as well, I suppose. So those are the archers there, right? And that's the uh, crone with the boots. And I've got my horses down here with another gargoyle behind them. So these ones are the sharpness horses. These ones are the uh, Pathfinder horses. Um, yeah, and that's the mounted, mounted uh, summoner crone. So I put down archers here. And I think I put the demon here relatively early because I wanted him to commit as much as possible to this flank so that I could distract him and then run away, hopefully winning this flank in time. Okay, so that was my plan on turn one. There it is, turn one, which I won. So I went forward. Uh, so I went first, um, as you should, and I pushed forward very, very aggressively, as aggressively as I could, really. Um, so I put my gargoyles right in front here with the uh, Pathfinder horses behind them. I've got my other horses here, obviously we're out of range, so all they can charge is my gargoyles. I'm out of range of 20 of this Pegasus Knight here, and of the dragon here, I think. Maybe I'm not, actually, I think I'm in range of the dragon. Yeah. So I put my Sharpness Knights in range of the dragon because I've got lots of other things that can charge him, because he's unlikely to kill them on a single charge. I hoped. On the right-hand side, so I put my archers forward, um, and I push my demon right forward to say, come on in, come on, have a go if you think you're hard enough. And that was my turn one. Nothing else happened. There's a little shot of the right hand of the board. And that's a little shot of the left hand of the board because it's early in the game, so I was still taking lots of photographs. So he responded thusly. So um, I didn't quite turn my demon far enough. I wasn't really playing at my best, if I'm honest. It would be much better to face him like this so he could move his mounted scouts down out of the Arc of Sight there, so the Arc of Sight comes out here, so he's got Peg Knight and Mounted Scouts and two Knights right in front, so the Demon's not going to kill one of these, and even if he does, he's going to get flanked, so that's, a, that's what you should do in the face of a single flyer, and a single flyer really isn't a match for all of this, it's really just a delaying tactic. On the left-hand side, he's not moved forward much, um, he's just used his Lightning Bolt on my Gargoyles and wavered them, which is a good result for him. Turn two... So, this is when I enact my plan of pushing forwards and just buggering off from the left-hand flank. So, obviously I can't move the gargoyles forward, so I just stay there. I shuffle forward slightly, but I push forward very heavily with my big melee block, because I think, I think Butchers can survive a single knight charge. Um, I don't think he can get to my uh, Shadow Hulk with anything other than his little dragon, who I definitely can survive. I'm just moving my Impalers, are just peeping over the hill. So that anything that happens, they can see. And then on the right, left, on the right-hand side, do I show it? 
Mm, yes. So what I do is I move my archers forward and turn, and I turn my demon, my archfiend, and turn him like this. Which I think is terribly clever, because it means that none of these guys can attack me, um, and they theoretically shouldn't be able to charge me. Note the theoretically, and I'll spoil it for you now, because uh, there's not much suspense, I think it's in, in maybe the next screenshot. But um, if I try very carefully with this mouse to draw a line across this base, I have, as you say, cocked up. I mean, it's not exactly like that, but essentially I've left this knight regiment in the flank of my demon, and I think they're one of the, one of the good ones, um, rather than in the um, rear. So I'm going to take 32 attacks of knights in the flank. Looking at it now, as you do in hindsight, that would have been a hindered charge. Because you'd have to turn to make, take the most direct route and go over this wall. Uh, but we did it with threes rather than two, rather than fours. Anyway, not important. So that's what happens on his turn two. So those are the knights. They've gone into my uh, demon in the flank. Should have been hindered. Um, and then the other knights and the scouts have just gone into the archers. Okay. Oh, I think the archers have shot at the scouts and done three points of damage. Well done, chaps. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. Maybe they're... Oh, maybe it's one point of damage. Whatever. Uh, I was kind of, I was hoping that we'd get the crystal pendant guy into the flank and then I could ignore him. Sadly not. And that's what it looks like with the peg knight. So he's just stuck that pegasus knight on that token to sit there for the rest of the game. And then in the middle, he's taken my bait and he's kind of gone in. So we've got knights, knights, dragon which is what I kind of hoped would happen, one each. And then he sneaked through his crystal pendant guy here onto my impalers. So you can see he's he decided to take them in the back. And then over here... Um, I don't think this is an attack. I think he's literally stopped one inch in front of me for reasons. Um, but he's lightning bolted off the gargoyles now, so they are gone. And I've got, that's right, I've turned my, rather stupidly, I think, I've turned my um, path, my caterpillar knights, that's their arc. This is the front, this is the oh, flank. Um, so the scouts have been able to come down quite happily. Obviously, the archers die, which is, you know, expected. And the arch feed takes uh, a whole nine wounds. <coughs> and then he rolls a ten twice. Or an 8 twice, actually. A 9 twice, isn't it? It was 9 because he's a 16, 18. Yeah, so he rolled an 8 twice and took the demon off in a single go. Boo! So that was my uh, major mistake right at the beginning of the tournament. Always measure your arcs, my friends. So now I've got three units of knights on me, which is uh, quite scary. So your um, your lad here, uh, Crystal Pendant General, did two points of wounds. Two points of wounds? Two points of damage to my uh, impalers. We've got six points of damage on this Butcher Regiment, three points of damage from the Dragon Guy onto my uh, Shadow Hulk, and these Knights destroyed those Butchers. But I've got some Impalers ready to go in, so that's okay. So, in response, I should be a turn three in here somewhere, but I'll maybe take it later. Uh, oh, oh, this was preview now. Uh, this is turn three. Um, so, turn three. The gargoyles, which if you remember, you can see at the bottom of the screen, are loitering, loitering at the back of the lane. The one I've got left, the, the line, the one I've got left, um, just flies in front of these guys, in front of both of the knights and the mounted scouts, to be a blocker, so that he can't come in. My soul bane has jumped out and gone into these knights. Soul bane, if he takes off their thunderous charge, he can last a good couple of turns. We've gone back into the crystal guy, crystal pendant guy with the impalers, because we can't, don't really have a choice. And we've gone, uh, we've countercharged with both the Shadow Hulk and the remaining Butchers. And then we've taken uh, a flank with the uh, Caterpillar. I've got to stop saying, err. It's going to be really annoying if you listen to it. I apologise. Obviously, this is just a hill. I know it's got rocks on it, but we treated it just as a hill all the way around. Caterpillar Knights went into the flank. Impaler's in the front to destroy those Knights. He's still got a Knight Regiment there, loitering back. And we decide with my sharpness knights to destroy the Pegasus General right in front of us because, hey, why not? Uh, why why is there two damage? I think that's just showing the charges, maybe. I hope that's just showing the charges. Yes. Yes. So I've taken the um, the Hydra on my knights. is removable, so I can use it as, you know, a Hydra. 
uh, but it made it so heavy that it was going to fall off even with magnets so I've just taken it off so just, show, just showing that these knights are gone uh, and I've turned my caterpillar knights around to face the charge from those knights because these scouts can't see and the impalers are uh, blocked so you can't see them so they're happy to turn this way to face off against the guys over here uh, Shadow Hulk's done 5 points of damage to this dragon, which is pretty good. And the Butcher's done 4 points of damage to those knights, which is also pretty good. They may or may not be the Brew of Strength knights, which would be bad, because they're defence 5. Defence 5 against knights when they've lost the Thunderous is great. Yes, that's a shame. What happened? Oh, and the other Pegasus General obviously went exploded in the face of Sharpness knights. We did 8 points of damage and waved at the Crystal Pendant guy, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's, the, there's the four points of damage, yep, showed you that already, and the five there, showed that. Oh, I'm finally saying it's turn three. Great, good job, me. Um, so what happened here? So, he shifted his scouts sideways because it didn't need them. The knights on their own are going to kill these gargoyles, right? And there's a token down here, don't forget. He's wavered, so he's, I think he passed his head strong, actually, so he might have gone back in. Uh, we've gone back in with the knights here onto the soul bane, back in with the knights here onto the butchers. Oh look, he's remembered that he's got shield wall and they've wandered forwards. The dragon's gone back into the uh, Shadow Hulk, who has been healed by some drained life from the crones. He's only on one wound again. We have got scouts into sharpness knights. We have got knights into caterpillar knights. Okay. Uh, who destroyed them? Which is bad, really. I'm disappointed in my knights, but they are normally a little bit more durable than that. But uh, clearly, we've got some hot dice over here. Look at these hot dice. Ooh. Yeah, so oh, look, my little stairs that I left on to show you how cool they are. I 3D printed them to make sure that I could stand units up. Mm. Uh, not much use, anyway, because uh, destroyed in a single turn, which is, you know, depressing. So there we are. That happened there. Uh, over here, we wavered. So these uh, butchers are proving extremely durable. So as soon as you take the Thunderous Charge off Knight, it's not very scary anymore, are we? Three more points of damage puts them up to nine, but he couldn't roll the Nerve. Only rolled a Waver, and they have, of course, got Fury. Uh, the Soul Bane, uh, as I said, very, very durable. When there's no Thunderous Charge, up to five wounds, he's okay. Even better for this flank, the Gargoyles took six points of damage, and he couldn't roll a four. So they all Wavered, which is fab news for me. Shadowhog up to six wounds. He's okay. Turn four. So we go back in here because what else could we do? Kill off those scouts. Um, I'm, notice I've got my crones that are always hovering around, draining off the easiest thing to drain off, which in this case is the uh, uh, the scouts. And the reason we do that is because the crone has an 18-inch heal range on cronebound stuff. So we're going to keep this Shadow Hulk alive as long as possible. Then, yes, so we went back in on the mm, general. We took our um, impalers off the hill into the shield wall. A uh, bit of a gamble, really, because I've got these knights loitering here. So, basically, I'm gambling on killing these guys so that I can then turn around to face the threat of the knights. Okay, but at this point, couldn't really do much else apart from just stand there and turn around. Uh, we go back in with the uh, butchers. We go back in with everything over here, apart from the uh, gargoyles, who've healed nearly all of their wounds off with their regen. Ho, 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 ho. Gargoyles, eh? So here's what happens. Um, we kill the general, which is great. You can, I, my screenshot? I've got a screenshot of that. I'll talk about that in a minute. On the right-hand side, uh, the gargoyles don't do anything. Useless. Uh, Soulbane continues to wound these knights, which is great. The impalers kill off the crystal pendant general, um, and I roll very low on the explosion roll it only take three wounds which is fab news because now i've got a recourse for when the, if the soul bane dies and when the gargoyles die the impalers can have their choice of targets looking a, bit, a little bit more positive even with no demon with no archfiend plus on this side i did kill the shield wall and i killed the general and i killed the scouts right so a lot of matt's army disappeared on this turn which is really good news for me because now he's got one unit of knights and two wizardy ladies. I've got impalers, knights, shadow hulk. Right? That's good odds. And on this right hand side, if we go over here, I've got butchers and impalers versus knights, knights. I'm not even counting the gargoyles and scouts. So, hmm. I've still got soulbane only five wounds. 
it's, it's, it's looking a lot more balanced than I thought it would uh, when I cocked up at the beginning. So I've managed to pull it back. Um, one of the downfalls of knight armies is that as soon as you hit them, they're much less powerful. So that's an overhead shot so in turn four, just to give us an idea of where the tokens are. So Matt's got this one with his shield wall at the back. He's got this one with his Pegasus here. He's probably going to get this one with the scouts. So I need to do something rather drastic. Because otherwise we're looking at a draw. One, two, three. Possibly, if I can win this one for me. All right? Hmm. So um, he takes, he, right, you know, he ignores the soul bane and goes into the butchers because they're more likely to be killed. They've got nine wounds already. So take the knights past the soul bane into the butchers. Knights obviously go into gargoyles down here. And then he takes, he chooses the softer of the targets. Notice I've regened most of my wounds off them. Uh, the, <laughs> the Shadowhawk is once again wound free, uh, thanks to all the drain life. So he chooses the softer target and he takes his knights into my impalers. Uh, yep. And also, it's a really smart move to think about it because these sharpness horses are behind the hill, so I can't see. And the Shadow Hulk is potentially facing the wrong way. If he can kill them and overrun, the Shadow Hulk won't be able to see. Uh, and likewise, over here, I still have got the Soul Bane. But uh, pretty smart moves, as you'd expect from a man of his calibre. Now, he's also got his wizards running around. So this wizard's run off back here so that she's out of this line of sight. Yeah, and he's got his other one here. Next to his knight unit. Uh, what's that? Oh, that's right. That's, yes. Yeah, so, son of a gun. So this uh, wizard lady, lightning bolts onto my knights. One wound. What does he roll? A double six. They're wavered. Devastated. Nightmare. Ah. Anyway, uh, the butchers die up here, and he turns to face this way. Obviously, because then the impalers have got a choice, right? Because the gargoyles are now also dead. The impalers and the soul wing have to choose. Who are they going to charge? They've got two units of unwounded knights. Um, and both of my units are wounded. So this side's looking rather fragile. On this side, however, he does not manage to kill my impalers. He does eight wounds with his knights, and they stand firm. Which is great news because you're going to get a Shadow Hulk in the flank. Turn five, getting to crux point now. So my wavered horses, I simply turn because actually at this point I need them to get onto this token. I need a unit there. I've regen the one wound off, which is robbing salt in the wound. I simply turn. Na, 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 na. Oh, have I missed a screenshot? I think I have. Yep. So obviously I went in here. I counter charge and we obliterated those knights. Apologies for not photographing that because I'm a terrible person. Um, so we killed them and turned around. So now I'm facing this way. Uh, this way, sorry. Like that. Uh, these knights on 10 wounds. So my impalers chose to go into these guys. No you know, no real difference, I guess. The soul bane goes over here against these knights and they go into these ones. 10 wounds. Unfortunately, can't roll a 6. This is how we're looking at the end of turn 5. Uh, and the situation is just really planning out, as I've said, in terms of playing for a draw, right? One, two, three for Matt. And unit strength-wise, if you look at it, I'm going to get one. The Shadow Hulk can turn onto here, two. Something's going to happen here. So we've got knights, are oh, three unit strength. They're held up by a soul bane. Three unit strength, three unit strength, three unit strength. Very even. So let's see who dies first. Me. <laughs> so, yeah. In fact, everything dies, which is rather unfortunate. So the this is uh, where it all starts to fall apart a little bit. So the impalers get splatted by these knights in the middle here. Uh, the soul bane also gets splatted by these knights. To make it worse, lightning bolts from the wizard lady wavers my um, impalers. Ten wounds. So they can't do anything. So at this point, turn six is going to be a loss. And here we go. It is a loss for turn six. So I send my knights over onto this token as planned. Instead of going up here with the uh, Shadow Hulk, I go into these 10 wound guys because I want to hit them and overrun as far as possible and try and stop them getting that token. Not going to work. And I simply turn these guys in the hope that if there's a turn seven, I can jump up here and take this token for the draw. So the counter charge. Oh, did I not kill them? Oh, I do kill them. Yes. So, 
Splodge, I kill them with the guy. Sorry, I was obviously running low on time again, far too excited. So I killed them, and then on the counter charge, these knights come into my uh, uh, Shadow Hulk. He takes nine wounds, but he's standing strong, and he can't um, he can't ever run any further. I think he's stuck there. And there's a turn seven, right? So turn six, I lose three two. Turn seven, here we go. So. Impalers move up here. The knights are on the one over there. Shadow Hulk goes into these knights. Right? Shadow Hulk kills the knights on turn 7. I've turned a loss into a draw at the last minute on my turn 7. Because I've got this token. And I've got the token on the hill. And I've got the token on the left hand side. 3-3. Three, three. Most of Matt's army is dead. This is how we're looking at the end of my turn. 1-2-3. Three for me. One, two, three for Matt. Matt's turn seven. He's got two wizards and a standard bearer. Wizards. Oh, he's also got mounted scouts, of course. Here. You'll notice the impalers aren't there anymore. <laughs> They've gone from 10 to 11 wounds. Both lightning bolts miss. The mounted scouts, the worst shots in the kingdom, do one wound. And he rolls the five twice, taking off my impalers and taking the victory at the end of the game. That's the last screenshot. So yeah, very close. Brilliant game. Brilliant game. Matt's great to play. Um, I really threw it away at the beginning and I thought I did really well to pull it back as far as I did. But unfortunately, not quite far enough. It was, I, I killed more than he did. <laughs> I had more left alive. Uh, so with the attrition scoring, it ended up a 14-6. Uh, to Mr. James, who went on to do extremely well in the tournament. I think uh, he was a few points off of a second or third place, something like that, anyway. So, at the end of the tournament. Let's plough on to game two. So, game two was against a chap called Chris and his Empire of Dust. Uh, I've not played a lot of Empire of Dust, but this was his list. Um, so, he had two hordes of revenants. They're the EOD revenants that are Death 4 and Crush 1. Uh, some little crossbow troop. A regiment of cavalry, uh, revenant of cavalry, regiment of scavengers, revenant of chariots, uh, three hordes of enslaved guardians archers, which is uh, grammar, uh, bone giant, soul snare, a heel focused cursed high priest with surge, and civic of ray the accursed. So, I guess the, the things that I'm worried about in this list are the, the kind of the three hordes of archers and the two hordes of revenants. Everything else, to me, is just flavour, I suppose, uh, designed around those units. So that's kind of uh, where I'm focused. We are playing Plunder. So, oh, look at that. I've actually done a terrain shot. I'll even tell you about the terrain, which I didn't bother to tell you about in the last game, which is uh, remiss of me. I apologise. So, these... The terrain was confusing, to say the least. So these ones, these weird kind of grainy things with a rock in the middle, the rocks are removable. So we said they were forests. Um, we think these are hills, because they obviously are. Then we've got blocking terrain, blocking terrain. We had this as uh, like rough terrain, right flat uh, along with this one. And then we had wall and wall. Okay, so that's the, um, the terrain. I was obviously on this side. My opponent chose this side. Plunder is the one where you've got five tokens down the middle and you choose one after choosing sides. Each that is worth two points, the other is worth one. So I looked at this board and I decided, as always with Plunder, you just need to win four. And I always prefer to go for a two and two ones. Because if you're going for both twos, you're both fighting over them and it becomes very bloody. Whereas usually they will be going for uh, the, the open ones. And I'm thinking he's probably going to go for these ones because it's a nice open and he'll want to be shooting. Right? So he's probably going to stick his archers here and shoot. Um, so I decided to go for these ones because they are on my side of the board and I'd be happy and he can shoot all he likes because there won't be anyone there to shoot at. That's my plan. So this is how we deployed. So as predicted, his archers are in a lovely shooting position here, ready to pepper me with their you know, ranged five shots. And then, so I've, I'll do my deployment first. So um, I deployed... The, the block as previously, exactly as it was in the last game here. So, uh, you know, uh, Shadow Hulk in the middle, Butcher's either side, Hero's either side. And then I put my, because he's got shooting, 
I need to protect my gargoyles more than anything. So gargoyles are behind blocking terrain. I've got my arch fiend over here in a wood looking out. And I've got all my cavalry stuff. So <laughs> I remember it exactly the same as it did in the last game. My cavalry are here. My cavalry are on this side because as he was deploying, he deployed quite a lot of stuff over here. So I predict, as I predict, he's going to go into this kind of open area. There's not, he's got, well, these are his rev cav. That's the bone giant. This is the soul snare. And this is one of his revenant hordes. I've just put my two horses here with some gargoyles for chat because I think I can beat all that with two horses. If I'm with one, it's my particular, my cavalry, which are really strong. Um... So I'm quite happy there. So I put I, I put my demon over here so that he would put even more things over here, and he did. So he's got his chariots, the crossbows, revenants, and uh, murder birds, what they're called, scavengers. So this revenant horde is right in front of a wall, and they're shambling, um, and they're speed five. So they're going to spend the entire game coming over here trying to get this token, which I'm pretty cool with because I don't want that one. I want these ones. And there we go. So turn one. So he won turn one. And he went first. So he just pushed forward. So he pushed these revenants onto the wall. And everything else just kind of mumbled forward. And everything else mumbled forward over here on the right hand side towards his token. And he just set up with his crossbows. who have got a 30 inch range. Um, so you can see over here. So I've got my... He's got his murder birds over there. He's got his revenants here. So you'd think, oh yes, you should charge the murder birds. But he's going to turn around and surge into me. So we don't want that. So, um, yeah, looks like that. So he's done, I think that's the crossbows, or possibly the chariot shooting at my uh, archfiend here. And he's taken one wound. He do not care. Now, unfortunately, I didn't quite manage the angles quite well enough, and he could actually see my gargoyles here from this particular enslaved guardian unit. They took three wounds, but they're fine. And then... Um, I was mindful of the shooting, so I put all my stealthy units in front. Still took two wounds onto this uh, exposed witchy unit. So then in my turn, I then push forward as fast as possible. When you're facing ranged stuff, you just need to get in. Get in nice and quick, because otherwise they will just eat you, eat away at you, even if you've got stealth. So I, I abandoned the flank, so the Archfiend came this way, behind this terrain, because he don't care. Uh, he's just going to leave them to that, and I'm pushing forward with everything else that so uh, very aggressive push forwards just staying out of range here now he is going to start shooting at me here but i think i can manage shooting it from the soul snare that is um i think i can manage that with regen and drain life uh, yeah and we've got our little impalers bring up the rear here so the impalers are quite vulnerable to the shooting because they're defense four and they've got piercing two so i'm just got my little front on the hill and i'm covered by this big sweep of stealthy stuff so, turn two... Yeah, turn two? Yeah. Could be. Notice I've already picked up one of the tokens here. So I've grabbed that one with my butchers. Have I grabbed the other one as well? Yes, I have. I've grabbed two one points and I'm ready to pick up this one. This two point token here. So is that turn two? Yes. So turn two, he's just swinging round. So he's swinging around to continue to engage. He's bringing all this stuff very slowly around here, which is fine. We don't care. Um, however, I've obviously I've pushed my archers forward and he shot them with everything he's got and they've taken eight wounds um, and they are wavered the butchers up to five already. So, you know, stealthy. It's so great. And then in my turn two, what have I done? Right, so I have started to block things up a bit because why not fun? And so on the right hand side, I've just put my gargoyles right in front of the chariots because um, a bit of a classic mistake here. He's he's logger jammed himself here. So this horde is huge and can't now turn past the chariots. It also can't see past the chariots. Chariots are height three. So the line of sight for these guys goes all the way over here. They can't see anything. So um, a gargoyle unit there holds up two pretty expensive units for quite a long time, and that's good. I've also picked up the two-point token just for, you know, giggles. Uh, I then used my wavered unit to hide my archfiend behind. I'm ready to charge out over here somewhere into one of these units, maybe. Uh, and to give some cover to this uh, impalers. And then I've triple charged on this side. So I decided I don't like Revenant Hordes. I especially don't like Revenant Hordes that hide behind walls. So I've gone in with everything that I've got. Um, or could have. I think I could have chosen something else. Or anyway. Um, but I've got both Butcher Regiments and the... Um, 
Shadow Hulk, and I've even bought my Soulbane for some Dread. Now I can be charged here, but don't forget, these butchers are already on 5 wounds. I don't really care about them, as far as I'm concerned they're dead already. So they can just die. Uh, on this right hand side, I've decided that he's being so cautious with his cavalry because he's trying to say so he did drain last turn, so I didn't take a photo. He drained three wounds on them. That's not enough to, for me to worry about. And he's being cautious with his other stuff. So I've literally just pushed these guys forward. Okay, got him. And I've picked up my two point token. I'm still out of charge range here and here, and I've managed to pick up the token already. So um, I've then put my uh, what's it called. Caterpillar knights this way because I've now turned these impalers to come here. So if he does take this charge, I think he, I think I might be in with the rev cav actually. I think I am in with the rev cav. Yeah. Um, if he charges them, then my um, impalers are ready to come in the flank, right? Because I can just move these guys off over here and these guys in here. That's my plan. And we killed them. We killed the revenants, which is pretty cool. It was 18 attacks on fives and twos. And then d6 plus 6, and I think I rolled a 6. I think it was 12 attacks on 3s and 2s. Uh, yeah, we smashed it. We dread. Good job, guys. I think I needed a 9 twice. And I rolled a 9 twice, and my opponent did not like it. And he complained vociferously about my luck. Hmm. Um, so we then rolled these butchers forwards, um, and then which protected the uh, other butchers, which have now turned to face this way. See? Gone. And then over here, what's happened here? I have oh I fireballed how exciting I got to use my demons fireball it doesn't happen very often so I did fireball onto these uh, onto these cavalrys and did two whole wounds good job turn three um, so he took the bait um, as in he sent his revenants into my knights and I'm ready to spring my lovely trap we'll see and then he's just turned his uh bone giant around to surge into the flank of these butchers which is cool because i've got a shadow hulk ready to say hi to his um his bone giant or or whoever or even a uh, soul bane um -num 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 -num. on this side so yeah he tried to get both he realized he couldn't get the chariots and the revenants in because he blocked himself so he ended up sidestepping with the revenant chariots and bringing the more powerful unit in Right, because that's the one he wants to hold the token. That's a good move. Da -da, what happened here? Oh, and then, yeah, so one of the um, enslaved guardians did take the bait and charge into here, which is slightly annoying. I was hoping they'd carry on shooting, but that's fine. Hopefully, he can survive that charge. Let's see. Uh, and then something's happened. Mm, what's this all about? Is it the shooting? Ba -ba, let's go back. Let's see a screenshot as well. Well, there you go. I've taken a picture of it, whatever it was. It's really exciting and cool. Um, and that is showing something died. Oh, he's shot. That's right. He shot the... Um, what's this called? Whatever it's called. The Soul Snare. Onto the Gargoyles. I'm not sure how. I think maybe he could see here. I didn't bother measuring it anyway. Killed them. Um, and the archers died from the other enslaved guardians. Don't really care about that. Um, and then we take eight wounds onto those. Oh, they were on five, weren't they? So they've taken three wounds from that hindered charge, and they are wavered. But they got fury, so they don't care. And again, over here, we've taken uh, however many wounds it was, like six wounds, something like that. Then we're wavered. We don't care. We've got fury. Uh, well, we did clear. He did clear off the gargoyles. So he's clear. So this is my turn now, and uh, he says that he's he, he, he set this as a trap. Is what he claimed. There's these crossbows here um, as a very clear target that I can come into with my arch fiend, who will then obviously kill them. Now I get that it's a trap. I understand. I'm not that dumb, right? Everything here is surgical. 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 They've got a token. They're not surgical. I have to drop it. In fact, you know what? I think he surged them with a token on. Man, I should have spotted that anyway. Whatever. Um, and these are surgicals. They're all surgical, so he's going to, of course, he's got an Archfiend in his back, he needs to deal with it. I'm using the Archfiend as chaff here, so this is entirely planned. I put him over here because I want him to turn this unit, and maybe even this unit, and maybe even this unit, over here to deal with the Archfiend. Don't forget, I don't care about this token, I don't care about this token. only care about the ones that I've got over there, because they're going to win me. Getting more tokens means nothing in this scoring system. So I'm going to put, you know, 300 plus points of Archfiend in the back of his lines and he has to deal with it. You know, good. Then, 
uh, this was a bit annoying. I'm not going to complain too much about it, but I reserve the rights. My YouTube channel. I'm going to complain a little bit about it. So, I said as I was going down, oh, I counter charge with these guys. Blah 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 blah. And I moved these guys up, and then I said, oh, and I'll go in the flank because I've got my impalers here ready to go in. And he says you can't do that. And I said what? And he said yeah, the charges have to be declared together. And I was like, uh, it's a different flank, isn't it? Anyway, we got cut out for a while. Apparently, it is in the rules that you have to declare charges against a single target at the same time. And I was like, yeah, but okay. Well, I'll just I'll move these horses first, and then I'll say this one. He said, well, you've already said it, and it is a tournament. And I was like, okay, you know, fine, <laughs> whatever. Didn't really matter. Um, but I thought it was a bit, you know, anyway. Wow, wow, wow. I'll complain. Turns out he's uh, look. He's done some um, shooting here. Put these guys up to seven wounds. Um, so yeah. So in the end, I just move these guys across and move these guys up, so that if I don't kill the revenant horsemen, what are they called, cavalry, and he turn and he kills me on the on the counter charge, then my impalers are here to so smash and pick up the two point token, which is very important to me. Uh, so yeah, we send the soul bane into the bone giant. And I bring my... Um, so I think he can stand up against that bone giant for quite a while. So instead of that, I put the Shadow Hulk over here because I need to start getting rid of these guys because they are killing my Impalers down here. And we can't charge anything else. And then, despite the complaining about the rules and, you know, the slight, you know, rules lawyering, I still kill them in a single round anyway because these are Sharpness Cavalry and they don't care. So, it all turned out okay in the end. And then over here, we did five wounds to these enslaved guardians here. Uh, Soulbane does one wound to the giant here. That's cool, we're just blocking things up. Because I've got a great big giant here coming into your, into you guys. And I've got another cavalry unit coming in as well, so... Grow gate. Um, yep. That's the five wounds there. I kill his little horse uh, archer people. And then he can do what he likes with me next turn. Turn four. So, yeah, he did. Look at that. Oh, man. So he turned his big unit of thing round to surge me in. Oh, man, I should have remembered. That would have been like, an incredibly smug. And of course, we can't surge them because they would have took them. Mom, 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 mom. But anyway, <laughs> didn't. But I was on his side either. Um, so he's going to obviously surge those into my arch feed. And then he has counter charged. And he's counter charged. And he's brought Sevic Ray over here for something. And then he's, so the line of sight for these horses is like this, so he's just moved his soul snare over there. Mm -hmm. And he's soul snared me for some wounds. And he's surged his revenants into a hindered flank. Wow! I don't know what happened then. That was, that was a butcher regiment going to heaven. Which they did. Uh, and the uh, soul bane goes up to five wounds. And he's soul snared off my horses. Oh no, what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to move my impalers in and pick them up. Pick up the token. And then I'm going to kill you. Like that. So this must be turn... Well, this is my turn four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go back in with... So I pick that up. I go back in with a soul bane. Uh, I go in... Oh, yeah, so they died. And then so the shadow help goes in there. With the support of a little... Um, uh, what were they called? Crone, summon a crone because you can do some drain life to heal the soul bane, probably. Over here, um, so you can see I didn't roll the wounds there, but he, he only did 12 wounds with that hindered flank, which is brilliant because it, it ties everything up for just another turn. That's exactly what I want. Um, now, over here, I've picked up the token that was dropped by, I don't, can't remember what happened with the token, but I picked it up with my horses, and now I am escaping. So, this is quite fun. They've got a token and they're shimmying off into the distance. And he's got two units of enslaved guardian archers that are going to try and shoot me off in two turns. Let's see if they can. Uh, so I do five wounds in return. Then he has to deal with me. Soulbane's down to three wounds with the drain life. And that unit of enslaved guardians is dead. So I'm going to come into his archers next turn. Turn five. So he goes back in... He's turned his chariots around, not sure why. What are they going for? Um, yeah, I'd have thought you would have wanted to turn them this way, but that's just me. Um, 
and he's brought his scavengers over to try and interfere with my horsemen, but I'm not scared of horsemen. I mean, not scared of scavengers. That's the soul snare draining onto my impalers for three wounds. They're feeling fine. Look at that. Look at that. What a round of shooting that was. Eight wounds onto defense five horsemen. It's uh, 30, it's 18, it's 36 shots on fives. I do some maths, but I can't be bothered. I'm sure that's within standard deviation. And he kills my Archfiend. He turns around. Whoa, so in return, I go into his Soul Snare. Triple attacks, yes, please. The Soul Bane, who is doing the job of his lifetime, carries on there. Um, I go into the flank, so he's he's moved into Slave Guardians um, out of sync, so I managed to put my uh, um, Shadow Hulk into the flank, which is great, because A, I'm going to kill them, and B, it blocks the line of sight for the other one. Nice! So you can't shoot me next turn. And I continue to be cowardly, regenerate some wounds there, which is very nice. There we go, that's a dead unit. I just stay there and say, well, you know, you can flank me if you like, don't care. Uh, oh, we're into turn six now. This is very exciting. Look, oh, yeah. mid movement shot of turn six. Uh, so Soul Snare's dead. Uh, Giants, I uh, probably got some wounds. Yeah, so now he's finally brought them down. The chariot's down here. But it's a little bit too little, a little bit too late. Um, he sends his murder birds, whatever they're called, scavengers, into the flank of my horsemen. I think he does like one wound or something. The, I've been, you know, trying to drain them off because I'm using her to obviously drain them because they've got low defense and heal these guys as well. So the regen and heal is going really well. Uh, he takes a flank there. He goes back in there. I don't think he does any wounds. Is that what I'm showing? Five wounds from a flank there. He don't care. He's dash 20. Oh, and that's the end. Right. So I didn't take many table shots here, but you can see I've got a token here. Whoa. I lost my pen. Come back, pen. So I've got a thank you. token here. I've got a token. A two, I don't know, I've got three tokens here because I picked one up early, didn't I? So they've got three. And they've got one. So it is four, three, two. So that was um, pretty good to have a victory after a loss. Um, by the way, I know some people complained last time about the fact there's black bars on the edge of the screen. It's because my phone takes photos in that in that resolution. I, I can't change it. I have tried, but it's an iPhone. They won't let you. Anyway, on to game three. And so we plough into game three. Game three versus Eddie, who you may know if you frequent social media about Kings of War as Eddie Barr. And then his Ratkin, and he's been painting up uh, Ratkin Force from Mantic Ratkin and they look amazing and I will say Eddie is like the nicest man. I just come out of quite a quite a tense game, a lot of kind of rules arguments and making sure people are rolling the right number of dice and stuff and um, and into this just wonderful gentle lovely man um, who I knew uh, from not I never met before but I knew from online and I was really excited to meet and he was a joy and this is his list um, a horde of warriors with plague pots, a horde of shock troops with plague pots and sharpness. Then two regiments of hackpaws, a regiment of vermintide, a regiment of tunnel runners with the caterpillar potion for, uh, for uh, Pathfinder, two weapon teams, a mutant rat fiend, a warlock with the boomstick, a war chief on a flea bag with a blade of slashing, a master scurrier with boots of levitation, a tangle, and of course, good Guzluk. The demon spawn of Dew, my favourite demon spawn. Interesting list, different to the one I would I, I, I run, I would say. There's a couple of elements that I, I recognise, like double hat paws. People well, people really underestimate how great they are. Um, I've not seen a master scurrier <laughs> since version three started. Very excited to see him. Um, so yeah, there's lots of little bits and pieces, but you know, I know Rakin, right? I play them, so theoretically, I should know how this works, right? <laughs> Let's see. So I managed to take a, a photograph of the battlefield, sort of, with our stuff all over it. We are playing Smoke and Mirrors, by the way, which is when tokens, you can see here, we haven't put them out yet, get disputed onto the board, face down bluff tokens, and you turn them over at the end of turn three. So we have difficult terrain here. I ignore, I think, another one over there. Some blocking, blocking. This is a forest. This is a forest with one tree. <laughs> one tree each. I think maybe they were running low. Who knows? 
Uh, there's a big hill here and another hill here and then two little walls. Alrighty. So these are our tokens when they're out. So uh, Eddie's tokens are green. I'm on this side here. So he's got one, two, three, four. Where's the other one? Where is it? I can't remember. I, th I know where it is. You can see it there. It's right down that corner of the board. And mine are one, two, three, four, and five. Right, so I can tell you where mine are and I can tell you why strategy is because I'm going to deploy exactly the same as I have otherwise. Um, blocking stuff's going to go here. It's the big block of melee stuff, right? And then my fast stuff is going to go on this flank. And I'm going to put the demon with it this time because I put my two there, my one there, and my one there. All right. So I am going to try and dominate this flank with my fast stuff. And there's enough of Eddie's tokens here that at least one of them should be a point which will allow me, if I get all of those, plus one of his, to win. That's the strategy. Let's see how it goes. So there you go. So he's um, spread himself a, a bit further across the board. It makes me think that there's, you know, some, maybe one of those is something. Um, he's got his hat and his war chief over here. And then a very similar block to me in the middle. So he's got, I think, those are warriors, those are shock troops. That's the mutant rat fiend. Two weapon teams, Tangle and Vermintide. No broodmothers, notice. Interesting, huh? That's his master scurrier. He's got his Tunnel Runners with the Demon Spawn and the other Hat Paws off against my two horses. You can't see the one, it's just here. And that's the Demon in the middle with um, my um, Gargles. So we've got a, a face-off here. I'm not sure who I fancy in that face-off. I think I, 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 I am more powerful. Because these guys still hit on fours. These guys hit on fours. It's a better dragon, but I've got more hitting power, so I need to get that punch off first. Um, and in the centre, I think again I've got more hitting power. He's got more shooting. So at this point of the game, I'm feeling quite confident with how it's laid out. And I get first turns. I put in a lot of pressure. I just I go for it. I fully go for it. Um, I put everything forward. I put um, my Shadow Hulk within range of uh, shock troops and the Mutant Rat Fiend because I'm like, go for it. Go on, you can try. It's a dash 20 and there's a wall. They are sharpness, but that will put them back to hitting on fours. Um, oh, maybe I'm just out of 12. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, let's see what he does and we'll find out. Um, so I'm backed up with my other stuff. I've kept my gargoyles back here because I don't want them to be lightning bolted. He's got a fair amount of lightning bolt going on. And then I push forward incredibly aggressively on the right hand flank. Um, so, hat pause charge 18. So, this is just outside 18, right? And I've got these are in a line, so he can't charge anything here. He can charge, you know, he can't charge anything apart from the gargoyles. So I'm tempting him to charge here. And this side, so in, in response, um, Eddie starts to bring his stuff over. This is very fast cavalry, 18. Well, it's, yeah, because it's nimble as well, so he can turn and come 18 all this way. So he can redeploy super fast with it. So why hack balls are much better than people think they are. And then he's done nothing with these guys. He might even back them up a bit. I think he's backed them out of 12, so I can't charge him with my butchers. And then he did something I didn't expect. Um, which, and this is really interesting, I think. I went a bit early with my gargoyles, right? But also, I've got, I've been playing with the same people for quite a long time. Uh, with only three or four of us in my local area that I play. And I think I've got quite used to how we play. So the idea that Eddie would just back stuff off and go, all right, you know, he's got lightning bolt five, lightning bolt eight here. And I've just put my only piece of chaff that's there. So he's just backed off and gone, okay, that's outside 16. What are you gonna do? Which is pretty smart actually, because then he shot my gargoyles off. <laughs> so um, I'm being outplayed. Whoa, oh, that's... So, Turn two. Oh, I think that was the turn dice. Anyway, it didn't go very well, did it? So I was like, ah, well, okay, that's not good. So at this point, I'm kind of thinking, hmm, what do I do? I've got these fast guys coming on the left here. So I turn um, some impatient. Notice I've turned them. They're actually facing this way at this point. It's just a mistake. I turn them back that way. They're supposed to be facing the cavalry. I've got some archers on a hill, so I can pepper some things, probably quite badly. 
they are out 12 so what I decided to do was put my um, Shadow Hulk who was in into the shock troops because I think he can take it for a turn um, also if you across here the mutant rat fiend you can't see me and then I put these butchers in here just to kind of slow up all these guys for a turn do what you want bought my other butchers and I bought from the right hand side I decided that yeah I don't like this this flank anymore I really don't like it it's it's not nice um, I think, yeah, I think, last turn, right, the demon spawn just shot the gargoyles off and did enough wounds. So the this guy did six wounds with his lightning bolt to my cavalry, which is a lot of wounds. And on this turn, I forgot to roll their regen. I was not playing very well at all. Playing badly, so I forgot to roll their regen. Anyway, I didn't like this flank anymore. But it's all the way over here. So I decided to abandon it. I thought, well, let's punch through here instead. So I turn my Caterpillar Cavalry over here and I bring my Impalers in instead as a second rank, right? So I swapped over. I need some more punch here and some more durability here. Something like that anyway. I don't know what I was thinking of from this. Um, and then my archers, bless them. Two turns they've been shooting, moving and shooting um, off that hill. And they kill the weapon team. Go on, elf archers. Look at them. They can actually shoot. Isn't that exciting? Uh, we do six points of damage to the shock troops, which is good. A good amount. We do have some dread, but we didn't manage to get any nerve rolls that were worth doing. What's happened here? So this is Eddie's response. Um, he's now pushed his hat paws to go here or go down there. I, I don't really know what they're doing. <laughs> And he's brought his war chief down here because he's fed up with my archers shooting off his weapon teams and he's going to kill them, which seems reasonable. So we have a double charge from the warriors and the mutant rat fiend onto the butchers. I'm not sure that's enough to take them off, but let's find out. And a counter charge here. And he just, he's chucked his uh, scurrier, his assassin, right in the middle to start shooting at stuff. Because actually that just increases the amount of very powerful shooting What's going on here? You see what's going to happen. Didn't roll my regen. Four points of wood, four points of damage. There were some sharpness horses minute ago here that did nothing this game, and now my archfiend is on his own. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I have really cocked it up. Really cocked it up. So um, my confidence in uh, the Shadow Hulk was misplaced um, with uh, a canny bane chant four from the tangle sharpness shock troops on a on a shadow hulk is going to take him off and he died very painfully but i've got some horses and stuff so you know as as predicted not enough power so four wounds but wavered ah, we've still got our little um theory going on there right plow into turn three so we decided to bring the pain at this point we're like okay let's go for it so the archers um, can't shoot anything this turn. I think they don't. Um, I, I, I'm going to talk about this in a minute. I, all right. I'm happy with how this side, right? So we counter charge into the mutant rat fiend. I don't think I'm going to kill him, but I'm going to hold him up because I've got my impalers ready to come in. And we're in a position whereby these guys, these warriors, can't turn this way. Okay. Um, I should point out, I think he's used his plague pots last turn on his shock troops. I might be wrong. Anyway, so the Caterpillar Cavalry and these guys. No, he used them this turn. It was this turn. And the Butcher's going here. So Butcher's now hitting on fives. These Cavalry are now hitting on fours. That's bad. I've got Drain Life, but it's going to go into Mutant Rat Fiend. Because I can't see. Height three. Height three. <sighs> I have got Gargoyles left here to do something with Gordon as well. Right, so... <laughs> Right, so I looked at these and I had a moment of madness because there's a thing you can do with a flyer is that if you can clip the corner, at least, of a character you want to attack, they turn to face you and if you kill them, you overrun into the facing of the unit next to them, right? That's great. And I saw this and I think, you see how they're aligned? I think I saw this gap here and thought, mm -hmm. great. I'm gonna go into the Warlock with my, with my Archfiend I'm going to kill him and overrun into the flank of the hat cores. 
and then I've taken a unit out and I can turn and these guys are going to have to spend a turn killing me by which point I've cleared up over there. Brilliant, I thought. Yeah, so they're both backed up against a flat surface here and they're both cavalry so they're aligned, right? Are they? I'm just going to go and check something. Alright, I was just checking something. They are the same width. <laughs> I thought I'd made a mistake. I didn't. I did make a mistake. Um, this is 100, right? So they are entirely aligned. So if I kill the warlock and overrun, there is no place for me to fit here. And so I'm just stuck in front of three units waiting to die. It's a monumentally dumb mistake to make. I, <laughs> I know better than this. I just... I don't know. I cannot explain why I thought this was a good idea. I cannot explain it. We'll come back. We waver the shock troops, which seems really good, right? That's 16 points of damage. So 16 points of damage, there are 22, 24. I needed like an eight. Didn't get the eight, I got a six. So I've wavered them. Tangle has an aura of fury, so that's no good. Yeah, so I killed the warlock. Eddie very politely and very kindly kind of goes, well, they're aligned, aren't they? So you can't, you can't fit. I have a, a minor mental breakdown. <laughs> uh, cry, I don't actually cry. Internally, I do, and go right. I guess he'll just die then. Let me back up. I don't want to talk about it. So when it's turn, these guys have come round the house. I don't know why they didn't just come round the front anyway. There we go. Um, this is turn three, isn't it? Uh, the war chief finally goes into the archers to stop them shooting at stuff. The master scarrier comes around here to shoot off my gargoyles, I assume. He doesn't need everything to go into my uh, archfiend, so this uh, demon spawn comes into my impalers. Let's find out how powerful the demon spawn is. This happens. It makes me sad to even look at it. This is like an illustration of my idiocy. And then, so, warrior flank. You know, in front on this little butcher regiment. And he countercharges with the fury aura into the cavalry, which is the correct thing to do. Scurrier does two points of damage to the gargoyles, and they love it. They don't care. Two points of damage from him into the archers. They love it, but they can't shoot now. That's one of the first units I ever painted, by the way, three years ago. I needed some archers, so I just whacked them in. Let's not look at them too long. Everything else is much nicer. So yes, yeah, so these guys die. These guys die. It's all bad. I'm crying internally. I've got nothing left. And these guys die. Turns out Demon Spawn's really good. I could have told you that. He's great. He dies. <laughs> it's turn four. And this is the table shot. So I think at this point, I think I'm going to take a shot at this table just to show you how pathetic my gameplay is now. Everything is dead. Let's look at what I've got left. I've got a regiment of impalers. And I've got a regiment of butchers. And a troop of gargoyles. And then some characters. Oh, and some archers. I've got some archers. Um, yeah. Uh, and Eddie's got... Uh, well, everything. He's got everything. Everything is left. I've not killed anything at all. Have I? Oh, I've killed a weapon team. Killed a weapon team. Go me. So, I decided I want to play here with any of this. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, so we go down here. Right, so the Soulbane comes and just stands here because he's mighty. Um, so he stands in the way of Newton Rat Fiend. We're out of line of sight with these warriors here, so the Impalers are ready to play another day. The butchers go back into the shock troops, hopefully to kill them. They are, after all, on 16 damage. And we can't charge with the archers into the uh, war chief. And we do a point of damage. Go on, lads. I think this is a waiver token. I think I waver him. Yeah, go archers. Mm, ah, yes, we do kill the shock troops. There we go. We need two points of damage, though, which is garbage, isn't it? But we do manage to roll the six required to kill them. Oh, look. My gargoyles have flown off. So those are the gargoyles that were here being shot at by that scurrier and they're just like we need to just survive so i just you know mooch off over here in region so here we are um lots of shooting 
goes into I think the mutant rat fiend might have yeah I think he's turned that way I don't know why he's come off his base now anyway um lots of shooting goes into my uh, impalers 11 points of damage but they're okay so you've got us you know a master scurrier weapon team tangles fireball that's a lot very painful when you're defense four uh, it's all a bit pointless because he's turned around his like cavalry contingent oh we've turned the tokens over by the way how exciting so you can see that this one is a one and this one is my one that I told you on before uh, so which side of the table is this from yeah, the same side. My side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My side. Okay. So, uh, Eddie's number one token is here. That's my two. That's my one. And my other one is up there. Right? I wonder if we can find out where the rest of his tokens are. That's my tokens. Ooh, that's not going to be far Um. Anyway. So, well, we'll see them in due course. We're really very fighting much over this area. So, he's turned his cavalry around. It's all looking bad. He's got his demon spawns coming. So the hat paws go into the archers. Somebody's done something very mean to my crone and done a point of damage. I don't know why. Phone five. Phone five? I think it was lightning bolt or something. Lightning bolt. Yeah, it was lightning bolt from him onto her. One point of damage. She don't care. Turn five. So here we are. Here's a group shot. I think maybe there's a token down here or something. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I've not got any troops left. Um, so Tunnel Runner's going to Butchers. Everyone else is... Oh, I'm hiding behind here with this. The Gargoyles have, have once again... So actually, Butchers going to Tunnel Runners. Apologies, it's my turn, isn't it? Um, the Gargoyles just, are literally just running away. <laughs> They're running to the corner now for no apparent reason. So all of it... Oh, and the Soulbane's going into a weapon team because they think he's most likely to kill. I'm going for points at this point. Um... So we try and drain off the tunnel runners. Uh, what's happened there? Oh, that's right. I flanked with my archers onto these um, hat paws, which I thought was really cool. But it turns out I hit on five, so I'm garbage. Four points of damage there. And the Soulbane. Soulbane. We killed another weapon team, so, you know, yay. Um, so one point of damage onto that one from Lightning Bolt again, maybe, probably. Uh, I think that's fireball onto him on sevens or sixes. One point of damage onto him. Ah, oh, it's my archers dying on the counter charge. Ah, oh, lads. Oh, he survived that. Look at that, six points of damage. It's a front from tunnel runners and uh, a flank. I only got crushed one by that point, you see, because I've hit them. And then a flank from uh, hack paws in the terrain. Turn six. Well, I'm definitely going to win now, right? Nope. I still don't mention <laughs> the cargo is still running away. Look, they've now come down here to run away. No current reason. I think they just will be out of line of sight of the demons. One. I'm trying to preserve any points. Uh, flank. No, no, no. I counter charge the tunnel runners. We put them on nine. Still don't bloody die. The tangle goes into my soul bane. One point of damage. He doesn't care. Uh, what happens here? God knows. I think I've drained life and healed them back to five. Uh, I think he just jumped on all the tokens. Yeah, yeah. There's my two. Oh, that's his two. Right, so his two was there and his one was here. And he had another one, but it was the one that was all the way over in the corner. There you go. I told you we'd find out eventually. He's got his mutant rat fiend on the one there. He's got his demon spawn on the two there. Yeah. There's some points of damage going. On. I think it's more likely bolt to the gargoyles who still don't die. Ooh, that's an exciting kind of. I think I switched my camera mode by mistake. Who knows what that was? Uh, so yeah, uh, and the butchers die finally. Can you believe that? After two rounds of combat, two flanks from hack paws, they die. I am down to a troop of gargoyles and two heroes. I hide the heroes behind the troop of gargoyles, and then we have a good old cry, and that's the end of the game. Shambles! What a shambolic way to end the day. Um, so I got beaten thoroughly in the first game, I won the second game, and then I forgot how to play Kings of War in the third game. Uh, not that Eddie played badly, he played very well. Uh, it's just that I played like, you know, I, I don't really feel like I gave him much of a challenge. Given I kept on giving him free flanks on expensive units. Um, so yeah, we're not to have some KFC. And we will return soon with games 4, 5 and 6 from day 2. How exciting. See you later.